Sometimes, especially in the Old Testament, we hear these names of people being used and we don't really know their backstory and so it doesn't really help us understand what's going on. And in the reading that we just heard from the book of Samuel, we hear about these two sons of Eli named Hophni and Phinehas. And these are priests of the Lord. And they are uh, with the Israelites. And when the Israelites are being attacked by this evil army of the Philistines, they realize we can't beat these enemies. We should go and get the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant was uh, what Moses had been commissioned by God to, to, uh, to build. And it housed the tablets of the law. It housed manna. It was this place where the presence of God rested. And so the Israelites were thinking to themselves, look, we're going to go and get this Ark of the Covenant. We're going to bring this into battle for us. And God's going to win the victory for us. And they were all excited. And the Philistines were scared because they heard the Israelites partying in their camp. Like, we've got God on our side. We've got the ark. There's no way we're going to get destroyed. The Philistines are nervous. But in the battle that happens, the bad guys win. The Philistines utterly decimate the Israelites. They kill so many soldiers. And worst of all, they take the Ark of the Covenant almost like they were taking the presence of God hostage. It was a humiliating defeat. And in the battle, Phineas and Hophni, these two priests of the Lord, were killed. So what's going on? What's, what's the moral of this story? Like, are we not supposed to trust in God? Is the enemy really going to beat us in the end? Well, Phineas and Hophni, these priests... If you know a little bit of their backstory, they're not the best priests in the world, to put it lightly. They were very used to stealing from the sacrifices that people would bring to the temple. So people would bring to the temple offerings to the Lord, and Phineas and Hophni would take some of it for themselves. And they would actually threaten the people if the people didn't bring uh, offerings that they liked or good enough offerings, they would actually threaten them and intimidate them and take even more from them. And they also were fooling around with the women who served in the temple. Priests. These were priests of the Lord that were doing this. So obviously, their faith in God wasn't at the heart level. It was all superficial. It was all about what they could get for themselves. And yet, in times of battle, they were the first ones to be at the front of the troops with all the, all the Israelites saying, yeah, let's bring the Ark of the Covenant, almost treating God's presence as if it was something superstitious. But the Lord wasn't looking for outward, exterior things. He was looking for a relationship of the heart, which they didn't have. And as a result, they went through a humiliating defeat and eventually lost their own lives. Now, how can we treat our faith as something superstitious? Sometimes we can be tempted to rely on external things as a way to make ourselves feel spiritually safe. I've got my miraculous medal, I've got my crucifix, I've got my St. Benedict medal, I do my novenas, I've got things written above my door, I, I pray with this blessed salt, I use this shrine. And I'm not saying that any of those things are bad. Like, I wear a miraculous medal. I have a St. Benedict medal on my wrist as we speak, right? I'm not saying that these things are bad. But they can become bad. They can become unhealthy if, as Catholics, we use them as superstitions. If we think that it's all a matter of if I have the right medal on, if I pray the right prayer, if I do the right novena, if I visit the right shrine, that means that I'm good with God. That means that I'm definitely on my way to heaven. But the Lord is saying, I want your heart. I want you. I want the medals and the crucifixes and the novenas, all these good things. I want them to, you to use them because you have faith in me, not as a superstition that replaces true faith. The Israelites were using the Ark of the Covenant as a superstition. And the Lord had to teach them a lesson by letting them lose this battle that superstitions won't save you. 
but faith in God, trust in him, a relationship of the heart with the Lord that is truly interior, that truly has changed who you are. That's the kind of thing that saves And it is out of that relationship with God that we make use of all of the amazing sacramentals of the church that he has given us. I'm not telling you to go home and throw out your miraculous medals. I give miraculous medals to people all the time because they're good, but they have to be used out of a space of being in a relationship of love and of faith in the Lord Jesus. And it becomes disordered when we use them merely as something superstitious.